Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Meenal Dhal from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today we will uh, discuss about the module Culture as a Tool of Adaptation from the paper Ecological Anthropology. So, we will discuss about the objectives which we will cover in this module. First, we will discuss about what cultural adaptation is. Then, to how to study the process of cultural adaptation. We will also study the array of examples which help in deeper understanding of the topic. And we also discuss about the to study the concept of cultural variation due to different types of adaptation. So, firstly we will uh, we will introduce you about the concept of culture. Now, man comes into the world as a helpless infant possessing no developed inherited mechanisms for behavior. He must be taught to eat, to speak, to walk and to perform nearly all the overt actions required for living. Even as an infant, he performs certain actions such as swallowing or elimination. These are often profoundly modified by the experience and learning. So, during his relatively long period of infancy and childhood, man has ceaselessly subjected to a learning process which eventually provide him with certain ways of living appropriate to the society into which he is born in and in which he is educated. Men like animals live in more or less organized clusters which we call societies. Members of human society always share a number of distinctive modes or ways of behaving which taken as a whole constitute their culture. Each human society has its own culture distinct entirely from that of the other society. The concept of culture which Kluckhorn has defined as all the historically created designs for living explicit and implicit rational, irrational and non-rational which exist at any given time as potential guides for the behavior of men. And it helps us to understand the human behavior. The diversity of human behavior is also clarified by this concept when we realize that each human society has a distinctive culture or to quote Kluckhorn again, a historically derived system of explicit and implicit design for living which tend to be shared by all or specifically designated members of group that is called as society. Now, culture plays a vital role in adaptation to the environment. As it is shown in the figure, it is clear that the anthropological definition of culture is far more comprehensive than that of the word as it is ordinarily employed. Many people hold that culture is synonymous with development or improvement by training and education. A cultured, more properly cultivated individual is one who has acquired a command of certain specialized fields of knowledge, usual arts, music and literature and who has good manners. Now, person not so well educated in these fields or person whose manners were learned in the streets rather than in a polite society are often called as uncultured. In anthropological usage, however, this distinction is not significant. Culture is not restricted to certain special fields of knowledge. It includes ways of behaving derived from the whole range of human activity. The designs for living are evident in the behavior of Eskimos, the natives of Australia or the Navajos are as much as a part of culture as those of cultivated Europeans and Americans. Culture includes 
not only the techniques and methods of art, music and literature, but those used to make poetry, sew clothing or build houses. So anthropologists cannot observe culture directly. They can only observe what people do and say and the processes and techniques they employ in the manufacture and use of material artifacts, baskets, pottery, weapons, painting, sculptures and many other items of the same sort are collected and studied because they represent the end product of ways of behaving in a given society. Similarly, many varieties of human actions are studied, not as isolated items of behavior, but for the light they may throw on the ways in which human beings are taught to behave in the societies which they live. Now, in 1870, Tyler gave the definition of culture as the complex whole which include art, belief, customs, knowledge, laws, norms and any other capabilities of habits acquired by human as a member of the society. Now, cultures are inherited and as members of a society, we all inherit our culture from the society through the medium of family. Culture is what can be said as a society's shared and socially transmitted ideas, values and perceptions which are used to make sense of experience and generate behavior and are reflected in that individual's behavior. Now, culture is socially constructed and learned rather than biologically inherited. Therefore, culture is learned, shared and is dynamic. Likewise, the ability of the living organism to survive in a particular ecological setup is called as adaptation. It is possible for the possession of certain physiological, biochemical, genetic, behavioral characteristics, characteristics since an ecosystem changes with time and space and organism have to adapt themselves with the new environment. Now, Various species of the animal kingdom show, shows the evidences of adaptation. Human are not exceptions. According to Darwin, evolution itself based on the adaptive selection. The organisms which can adapt to their environment in a better way are permitted by nature to survive. That is survival for the fittest. Therefore, the less adapted organisms are eliminated gradually through, the de through death before the attainment of reproductive age. Thus, adaptation is regarded as a process of modification in the structure and function of an organism for which it can survive and reproduce in a changing ecosystem. Now, for the alteration of natural environment, not only man, but all organisms face a crisis and so they undergo certain changes in their characteristics. Adaptation is also a process of adjustment, chiefly biological in nature, which takes place under the climatic variation. The animals which fail to adapt become extinct since Man is a higher intellectual animal. He is endowed with number of ways to minimize the effect of different environmental conditions. He learned behavior that is culture helps him to cope up any sort of adverse climate at any place in the world. In fact, culture represents an intimate adjustment of people in a given environment. Each human culture is a unique one that shows adaptation of a group of individuals to their local environment. Culture acts as a protective sheath 
between man and nature and it is a reaction against environment with an inventive brain. In this purview, one of the best example is hunting and gathering. It is it, uh, as it has been the most and foremost successful and persistent adaptation which human being have ever sustained since. Hunting and gathering is the most important part of human culture at one point of time. Another example is Bushmen of the Kalahari Desert. They have adapted to the environment very well living in a holistic environment. Their bodies are lean and thin so as not to allow water loss from the body and through decades of evolution their genetic code allows them to go without water as compared to a non-Kalahari resident. Now in India, if we see the tribes for instance Chinchus and Bheels still subsist their living as hunters and gatherers. They have adapted tools like bows and arrows which help them to hunt efficiently among the bushes. Most importantly, if we see adaptation in cold areas, it would be different in comparison to hot environment as the people living in cold environment have different adaptation requirements. The people dwelling in extreme cold region need more warm clothes. Our ancestors covered their bodies with animal skin, especially animals like arctic fox or polar bears as those animal skin help them to prevent heat loss from the body and provide more heat. Now we will talk about the cultural adaptation with examples that is uh, man is essentially unique in developing culture as a means of more rapid adaptation to divergent environments. When culture is viewed as a tool of adaptation, a number of analogies to organic evolution appears. Species are divided into populations each of which are adapted or is adapting to its particular environment. Similarly, each society has its own culture and this represents one possible adaptation or way of life to permit survival in the particular environment in which the society exists. Now cultural adaptation has played a crucial role in human evolution. Human foragers adapted to a vast range of environments. The archaeological records indicates that Pleistocene foragers occupied virtually all of Africa, Eurasia, Australia. The data on historical known hunter-gatherers suggests that to exploit this range of habitats, humans used a dizzying diversity of subsistence practices and social systems. Consider just a few more examples. The copper Eskimos lived in a high arctic spending summers hunting near the mouth of the Magnesia river and the long dark months of the winter living on the sea ice hunting seals. Groups were small and were highly dependent on men's hunting for survival. Now the Eskimos culture based on the environment they live in that is the extreme cold have helped them to evolve a culture to adapt to the cold environment. In Kalahari desert, women have played a great role in collecting of seeds, tubers and melons which accounted for most of their calories in their diet. Men were involved in hunting impala and gems bok. They even survived fierce heat and lived without surface water for months together. 
both of them lived in small nomadic bands linked together in large band clusters by patrilineally reconned kinship. The Kumash lived along the productive California coast situated around present-day Santa Barbara, gathering shellfish and seeds and fishing the Pacific from great plank boats. They lived in large permanent villages with division of labor and extensive social stratification. Now, you can see in the figure that how Bushman adaptation can be seen in the hot environment and how it depicts, this picture depicts the hunting. This range of habitats, ecological specializations and social systems is much greater than any other special species. Big predators like lions or wolves have very large ranges compared to other animals. But lions never extended their range beyond Africa and the temperate region of western Eurasia. Wolves were limited to North America and Eurasia. The diet and social systems of such large predators are similar throughout their range. They typically capture a small range of prey species using one of the two methods. They wait in ambush or combine stealthy approach and fast pursue. Once the prey is captured, they process it with tooth and claw. The basic simplicity of the lives of large carnivores is captured in a Gary Larson cartoon in which a T-Rex contemplates into monthly calendar. Even every day has the notion, notation that kill something and eat it. That is the concept of hunting and gathering. In contrast, human hunters use a vast number of methods to capture and process a huge range of prey, species, plant resources and minerals. Some animals are tracked a difficult skill that requires a great deal of ecological and environmental knowledge. Others are called by imitating the prey's mating or distress calls. Still, Others trapped with snares or traps or smoked out of burrows. Animals are captured and killed by hand, shot with arrows, clubbed or speared. And this is just the ache. If we included the full range of human being strategies, the list would be much longer. The list of plants and minerals used by human foragers are similarly long and diverse. Making a living in the Arctic requires specialized knowledge. How to make weatherproof clothing. How to provide light and heat for cooking. How to build kayaks and umiaks. How to hunt seals through holes in the sea ice. Life in the central Kalahari requires equally specialized but quite different knowledge. How to find water in the dry season? Which of the many kinds of plants can be eaten? Which battles can be used to make arrows, poison and the subtle art of tracking game? Survival might have been easier in the Balmy, California coast, yet specialized social knowledge was needed to succeed in hierarchical Kumash villagers compared to the small egalitarian bands of the Copper Eskimo. We may say that humans are more variable than lions, but what about other primates? This question was 
are raised by Byron in 1999. Don't chimpanzee have culture? Don't different populations use different tools for and uh, for aging techniques? And concluded that there is no doubt that great apes do exhibit a wider range of foraging techniques, more complex processing of food and more tools used than other mammals. However, this technique plays a much smaller role in great ape economy than they do in the economies of human foragers. Byron went on compared the for, foraging economies of a number of chimpanzee population and human foraging group and found that they categorize resources according to the difficulty of acquisition. Collected foods like ripe fruit and leaves can be simply collected from the environment and eaten. Extracted food like fruits in hard shell, tubers or termites that are buried deep underground, honey hidden in hives in high in tree or plants that contain toxins must be processed before they can be eaten. Hunted foods come from animals, usually vertebrates which must be caught or trapped. Chimpanzees are overwhelmingly dependent on collected resources while human foragers get almost all of their calories from extracted or hunted resources. Humans can live in a wider range of environment than other primates because Culture allows the relatively rapid accumulation of better strategies for exploiting local environment compared with genetic inheritance. Consider learning in the most general sense. Every adaptive system learns about its environment by one mechanism or another. The learning involves a trade-off between accuracy and generality. Learning mechanisms generate contingent behavior based on observation of the environment. The machinery that maps observations onto behavior is the learning mechanism. One learning mechanism is more accurate than other in a particular environment if it generates more adaptive behavior in that environment. A learning mechanism is more general than other if it generates adaptive behavior in a wider range of environments. Typically, there is a trade-off between accuracy and generality because very learning mechanism requires prior knowledge about which environment cues are good predictors of the actual state of the environment and what behaviors are best in each environment. The more detailed and specific such knowledge is for a particular environment. The more accurate is the learning rule. Thus, for a given amount of stored knowledge, a learning mechanism can either have detailed information about a few environment or less detailed information about many environment. So, in most animals, this knowledge is stored in the genes including of course the genes that control individual learning. Consider the following thought experiment. Pick a wide ranging primate species. Let's say baboons. They capture a group of baboons and move them to another part of the natural range of baboons in which the environment is a different as possible. You might for example transplant a group from a lush wetlands of the Okwango Delta to the harsh desert of western Namibia. Next, compare their behavior to the behavior of other baboons living in the same environment. We believe that a, after a little while, the experimental group of baboons 
would be quite similar to their neighbors. The reason that the local and transplanted baboons would be similar, we think, is the same reason that baboons are less variable than humans. They acquire a great deal of information about how to be a baboon genetically. It is hardware. To be sure, they have to learn where things are, where to sleep, which food are desirable and which are not. But they can do this without contact with already knowledgeable baboons because they have the basic knowledge built in. They cannot learn to live in temperate uh, forest or arctic tundra because their learning systems do not include enough innate information to cope with those environments. Human culture allows learning mechanism to be both more accurate and more general because cumulative cultural adaptation provides accurate or more detailed information about the local environment. Evolutionary psychologists argue that our psychology is built of complex information rich in evolved modules that are adapted for the hunting and gathering life that almost all human pursue up to a few thousand years ago. Fair enough, but individual human cannot learn how to live in the Arctic, the Kalahari or else anywhere else. The reason is that our information rich evolved psychology does not contain the necessary information. Think about being plunked down on an arctic beach with a pile of driftwood and seal skins and trying to make a kayak. Nonetheless, you would almost certainly fail to make a kayak. And supposing you did make a passable kayak, you would still have a dozen or so similar tools to master before you could make a contribution to the Inuit economy. And then there is the social modes of the Inuit to master. The Inuit could make kayaks and do all the other things that they needed to do to stay alive because they could make use of a vast pool of useful information available in the behavior and teaching of other people in their population. The Inuit of the Arctic have realized effective cultural adaptation to cold stress in terms of clothing and shelter. They were layered clothing, trapping air between layers to act as an insulator. They wear clothes made up of seal skin as to trap body heat. They live in tents made of animal skin and as they travel on their snow, sleds drawn by snow dog. They also construct temporary shelters made of snow blocks which are excellent for trapping heat inside because of its shape. They were snow as an excellent insulator, permanent housing using underground entrances and higher living areas. The reason the information contained in this pool is adaptive that a combination of learning and cultural transmission leads to relatively rapid cumulative adaptation. Populations of people connected over time by social learning can accumulate the solutions to problems that no individual would do on their own. Individual don't have to be too smart because simple Heuristics like correlations, detection and imitation of the successful can produce clever adaptations when averaged over a population of individual and over generation of time. Even if most individuals imitate with some, only the occasional application of some simple heuristic, many individuals will be giving tradition a nudge in an adaptive direction or average, on average. 
cultural transmission per preserves the many small nudges and expresses the modified traditions to another round of nudging. Very rapidly by the standards of ordinary evolutionary time and more rapidly than evolution by natural selection alone, weak decision making forces generate new adaptations. The complexity of cultural traditions can explode to the limits of our capacity to imitate or to be taught, far past our ability to make careful detailed decision about them. We let the population level process of cultural evolution do the heavy lifting of our learning for us. Gradually, human population in dry, hot environment have realized effective cultural adaptations to heat stress using clothing and shelter designs to reduce heat production, reduce heat gain from radiation and conduction and increase evaporation. Typical clothing is light and loose. Shelters are frequently built compact, light colors reflect the sun and doors and windows are kept closed during the day. Now, we will summarize and conclude whatever we studied in this module. So, in this module, we have studied culture as a tool of adaptation. To pinpoint, ecology is the study of the interaction between an organism and environment. Whereas, adaptation, adaptation is the central concept in ecological studies because adaptation is the process whereby beneficial organism and environment relationship are established. For instance, Darwinism fitness is an index of reproductive success that is often used to measure individual or group adaptation. The way of life of the tribes, for instance, Bushmen and Inuit, their ways of living provide relevant information for us how to live in such an extreme environmental conditions. Environment affects human behavior and this affects the way of things. We can take the example of Nanook of the North by Robert Flathery. Living in a very cold environment affects their way of thinking, thus producing material culture like warm clothes, sleds, which make it easier for them to travel in the snow. Harpoons and fishing rods as the area is not appropriate for vegetation, so they need to hunt seals and fish. The Inuit of the Arctic have realized effective cultural adaptations to the cold stress in terms of clothing and shelter. They wear layered clothing, trapping air between layers to act as an insulator. They also construct temporary shelters and use snow as an excellent insulator. Permanent housing using underground entrances and higher living areas. The picture displays that the Eskimos adaptation to the cold environment shows how they live. Now human population in dry hot environment have realized effective cultural adaptations to heat stress using clothing and shelter designs to reduce the heat production and reduce the heat gain from radiation and conduction and increase the evaporation. Therefore, one can conclude that culture is a tool of adaptation and it is the environment which sets the culture of a man. Though Culture is the product of the environmental conditions one lives in and it helps to cope with different tools like the food habits, the clothing system, the housing pattern, etc. This helps people survive in the given environment and makes life possible on earth. Thank you.